And the thing that we're looking for is bugs. <laughs> we want an ancient habitable environment at about the same time that liquid water was stable here on earth and life formed. And where's the best place to go? So, so the place that was selected is called Jezero Crater. Here is the flight coming back from that epic flight, if you will, 133. It's coming all the way back to the same place we started, and then it is landing. So I'm going to talk about Ara Lari, the beating hearts of our Milky Way. Our Milky Way has many hearts, and we have discovered 200 of these hearts in our Milky Way, but others have found even more. And if you look closely at this image, I'm, I'm going to turn my laser pointer on and put it right next to one of these beating hearts, right, right to the left of my laser pointer. And they are pulsing in brightness. It's a time lapse and it's looping. Actually, even if it didn't loop, the stars loop. Thank you very much for inviting us, and we're pretty excited to let you know just what we've been doing. The starting off of tonight's presentation by you folks actually was a compilation of three minutes that one of your folks did of nine hours plus of uh, videos that we took on our last balloon. So we really appreciate uh, just that input that we've gotten from you guys. Uh, Regina wanted to roast me, so go and roast me. Hi. <laughs> Always tell me they have a problem with gravity, but I told them, just drop it. One of the things we found that isn't Earth-like but is super interesting is planets in resonance systems. Resonances are where the orbital periods of the objects are related to each other with very simple mathematics, like one is two times the other or one is half the other, that kind of very simple integer. So this is a system that I really love called K2138. So it has six planets around it and they were all found by citizen scientists. The cool thing about this system is that the five inner planets are in a chain of three to two resonances. So again, you know, mm. the inner one goes around three times, the next one goes around twice. That one goes around three times, the next one goes around twice, all the way out, three to two resonances. Mm. Why that's cool is resonances are music. Now what's happening is every time a planet goes in front of the star, it makes a note. And the frequency of the note, the pitch of the note, how high the note is, depends on how fast it's going. So the inner planet is the one making the highest, most constant note. And then it goes out and out and out to the outermost planet, which is making the low note that just happens occasionally. And the reason it sounds pretty, the reason it doesn't sound discordant or out of tune is because the planets are in resonance. So the Hubble Space Telescope uh, is still going strong, but the story of Hubble actually starts back in the year of 1946. And of course, everybody was celebrating the end of World War II at that time. And there wasn't a lot of knowledge about rockets yet. What people knew were the V-2 rockets that were used by the Germans to bomb Great Britain and what they saw in movies. However, in 1946, a very mild-mannered professor named Lyman Spitzer, who was at Yale University, he wrote a paper, and it was called The Advantages of an Extraterrestrial Observatory, or a telescope that would be put above the Earth's atmosphere. And he described what the advantages of those were scientifically. But he also made another very profound statement. And the profound statement in his paper was, the value of this isn't just to expand our knowledge of what we already know, but it's going to discover these new phenomena that we haven't even yet imagined. If you go in here, there's a little tiny red dot. We actually got a spectrum of that smudge of light, and that only detected the galaxy. It saw some very clear emission lines here of specific elements like hydrogen and oxygen. People got really excited about this pair of lines out here due to the oxygen. We did don't think anyone really expected to be able to see that. So we not only got a very, very deep image of the universe here, we're actually starting to get some very detailed physical information through these spectra. And if we're able to do it on that tiny dot of red light that you can't really even see in this big image here, imagine the richness of this that we're going to have when we're able to look at all of the thousands and thousands of galaxies in this image. And I think that what horrified most people is that I had in my hand what every academic desires. I had a tenure track faculty position in my hand. 
and I let it go, right? And I said, no, I wanna do something different. I thought the easiest thing to study was something that was equally quantitative in indigenous cultures, which was navigation by the stars. So what did I know about navigation by the stars before I started that research? Nothing, <laughs> nothing, nothing. So I'm going to be focusing on work that we published recently in Nature Astronomy on trying to image planets around other stars, specifically image planets still in the process of forming. And what this tells us about the diversity of planetary systems that the universe can spawn and how the solar system is common or unique. And we see evidence for these wide range of structures where they be maybe a clear cavities, spiral arms. All these, we think, are good telltale signs that that protoplanetary disk is starting to incorporate some of this material into a planet.